Hi, my name is Claire and I'm a TA for the GEP. Um, today, I'm going to be walking you guys through how to use the gene model checker. So first, we're going to want to open up our browser and let me share my screen. Great. And here I have um, a file that has the links that I'm going to be using. So we go to the GEP.org. Um, let me just pull that out a little so that we can see this on the screen. Okay, we're gonna go to projects. I'm just gonna choose pathways. And under the pathways project, you can see we have all of these resources over here. So the first one that we want is the gene model checker because that's what I'm gonna be showing you how to use. There's our gene model checker, great. We're gonna go back to the pathways project on the GEP's website. And we also wanna look at the GEP UCSC genome browser gateway. Okay, so the gene that I will be annotating for you guys today is from D pseudoobscura. So I go down on the left here and I find my species and I'm gonna check the assembly. There's only one, so that's the one I'll choose. And then the gene that we're going to be annotating is RHEB. So I type that into the search term and I click go. I'm just gonna choose this top isoform and I'm going to go to configure really quickly and just make my text size a little bit bigger so that we can all see. I'm going to make my base position full. So now I can see all of my codons and my bases. And then since I can see right here that my introns are facing to the left, that means I'm going to be on the minus strand. And if you see this arrow right over here under the scale and the scaffold, I'm gonna flip that so that I can see the actual strand that I'm using and not the complementary strand. So I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so that I can see the whole gene, but now I'm gonna zoom back in a little bit. Great, now I can see everything. So now I'm gonna take you to the gene model checker and I will zoom in really quickly for you guys so that we can really see what's going on over here. Maybe I'll just take it down more. Okay. So I'm going to select my species. I can either type it in, these sort of squirrel, or I could click the down arrow and scroll through that way. Select my genome assembly. Um, there's only one again, for this species, and then scaffold name. Okay, so to find the scaffold name, I'm going to go back to my genome browser, and I can find the scaffold name in several places. So I can either find it up here, before the semicolon, over here, or under the scale. So the scaffold for my gene is CM, four zeros, and a seven zero. So CM... So I'll click on that one. And then my ortholog name is RHEB. I said I was using the PA isoform, so that's what I'm gonna choose. Okay, so the next question is errors in consensus sequence. So um, we're going to assume that we don't have any error in our consensus sequence, and we're just gonna select no. If you think that you do have an error in your consensus sequence for some reason, that would be a situation where we would ask you to contact the TA so that we can give you a little bit more guidance on that. So like I said, errors in consensus sequence, no. Great. So coding exon coordinates. So these are going to be the coordinates that you previously found during when you were annotating. And you could also go and find them this way on your genome browser, but I already have mine. So I'm just going to type those in there. I already had them in a list somewhere. And so then um, we will determine, hmm, 
what strand was I on? And we talked about that earlier. I'm on the minus strand because my introns are pointing to the left and I already flipped my track. So now I'm gonna click over here and select minus. And then the stop code on coordinates will automatically fill themselves in if I have the correct orientation and all my coding exons filled in. So if I click in the stop code on coordinates box, they should automatically fill themselves in. So that's just a little trick. Okay, so then going back to this annotated untranslated regions. So if you're only annotating the CDSs, you're going to select no and just simply leave your coding exon coordinates in there and no other issues. If you are annotating some untranslated regions, then you would select yes. And then in this box, you would type in all of your coordinates, which would be including the coding exon coordinates that you already filled out previously up here. So if you're annotating the untranslated regions, as I just mentioned, you would put in the untranslated regions um, at your five prime, and then you would put in all of your coding exon coordinates. And then if you had a three prime untranslated region, you would also put that in. For this gene that I'm showing today, we don't have any untranslated regions that I'm annotating. So I will select no. For the completeness of these genes, we are again going to assume that these are complete. And if you have any inklings that your gene model may not be complete, that would be another situation where we would ask you to contact the TA so that we can go through that a little bit more with you. Okay, so it looks like I have all of my information filled out and the next step is to verify the gene model. Hmm, okay. So it looks like I have some issues here and I will go through them looking from top to bottom. So all these ones that have a green check and pass, we're good. We don't really need to do anything with that. Um, if we see a fail, let's read what it says. I'm going to elongate my browser a little bit. Okay. So the first fail says found non-canonical sequence ATA. So, hmm. Interesting. So the little magnifying glasses that you see under this view are very convenient and they will take you exactly where your error is. So if I click on it, I can make this browser a little bit bigger and I can determine what is going on. So this custom model at the top is ours. Uh, I'm going to configure this really quickly and just make it a little bit bigger for us again. Okay. So our gene model at the top is the one that we wrote in with our coding exons. These are some other tracks. So I want to zoom in on my model and see what exactly did I do. Okay. Zoom in a little bit more. So I'm looking at the end of my last CDS. And okay, so it seems like my custom gene model ends up one base short. So what that's telling me is that I put in a wrong coordinate somewhere, which is okay. It happens all the time, you just miss a number. Um, however, sometimes when you do put in the wrong coordinates, you can end up causing some shifts in the numbers that will cause multiple errors and multiple things to fail. So if you're looking in your list of fails, you always want to start with the one that's closest to the top, because a lot of times if you make an error upstream, it can affect the sequence downstream. So always start with the first one. So my um, coordinate for my last exon, I have my annotation with me here, so I'm going to look at that. So I had 615, so 2121716115. However, it looks to me that it's actually 2121716104. So that was just 
a simple mistake. So I can go back into the gene model checker and change that out for 215 to 214, because that's the last base before the stop codon starts. So I change this to 214. Um, if I change that to 214, then I also need to change my stop codon coordinates. So then that would shift over to 613 to 611. So now if I verify, I'm hoping to see this change to a pass. And it also fixed the other fail that I had. So that's what I was saying about how sometimes if you have a wrong coordinate in an earlier one, it can affect the lower ones. And sometimes when you fix that first coordinate, it all just even, evens out, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so now let's check this warn. So this warn is just kind of like, please check this out. It's not necessarily wrong, but it's something that's a little bit unusual. So for this one, it's telling me that it found an alternative sequence um, for a donor site that's GC. So we do know that sometimes you can't have a splice donor that's a GC versus a GT, but it is more uncommon. So they just want us to really ensure that that's actually what's happening. So I will again, click on the magnifying glass and it'll bring me right to where I need to be. I'm going to configure and just make this a little bit bigger for us. Okay. So based on all of my models here and where my RNA-seq data is showing, it looks like this is in fact the correct splice donor. And if we zoom in a little bit more, we can see that yes, the splice donor is in fact a GC versus a GT site. So I'm just confirming what I had already annotated. I know that this is in fact the correct splice site. So I can just click out of that and then tell myself, okay, that is correct. I took a second look at it and it was right. So then what we need to do is we need to get images of various aspects of the gene model checker to put in our annotation reports. So what you'll want to do first is make sure you get a screenshot of the gene model checker. So make sure you kind of get all of this information in here, this whole box, including the checklist and all of the gene model information. Then we also want to get the dot plot and you can just right click and save your image. And then we also would like to get the protein alignment. So you can come here and get your protein alignment. Again, right click, save your image. And then the last things that we want are, we want to download the GFF file, the transcript sequence file and the peptide file. And then those will also be included in your report. So again, the places that we used, we first went to the GEP.org, we went to projects, pathways, and we found all of our resources. The gene model checker and the genome browser are the most important for this right now. So here's our gene model checker, um, our genome browser. And I hope this was helpful. Yeah, thank you.